Hello everyone. Today, let's learn the Bit Index Explicit Replication (IPv6) encapsulation technology. BIRV6 is a new multicast solution and combines BIRV and native IPv6 packet forwarding. The ingress encapsulates the set of nodes for which each multicast packet is designated as a bit string in the packet header. Based on the bit string, each multicast packet is then replicated and forwarded. In this way, transient nodes does not need to establish a multicast distribution tree for each multicast flow or maintain per flow states. BRV6 can be seamlessly integrated into SRV6 networks, reducing protocol complexity. This course introduces BRV6 by covering its technical background, technical advantages, fundamental, application scenarios, and feature development. Video traffic, such as video call, video sharing, and video conference traffic, accounts for a large proportion of internet traffic. These services pose new requirements on network bandwidth and user experience. Multicast implements P2 and P data forwarding. It effectively reduces redundant traffic on network, as well as reducing the network load. In addition, it reduces the load of server and CPU on the application platform, as well as the impact of the increase of users on the multicast source. These features enable multicast to offer unique benefits in these service scenarios. While the potential applications of multicast are booming, the trend of adopting IPv6-based networks becomes more and more prominent. IPv6 provides a huge address space, which supports large-scale expansion and connections. Worldwide, many countries are developing IPv6 networks, and the number of IPv6 users is increasing rapidly. As IPv6 becomes more widely adopted, and new service scenarios require higher bandwidth and better user experience. Multicast technologies on IPv6 networks need to continuously evolve. First, let's talk about conventional multicast technologies. The development of conventional multicast technologies involves three phases. In the first phase, the GTM solution phase, PAM multicast is used on the public IP network. PAM is independent of the type of unicast routing protocol used on the network. And as long as reachable unicast routes exist between network devices, it can establish an MDT to guide multicast data forwarding. In the second phase, the IP multicast VPN solution phase, Rosen and VPN is used for multicast VPN services, and PAM is used for GTM. PAM protocol messages are directly forwarded through the tuner without being processed by BGP extension, and all VPN protocol and data packets are transparently transmitted over the public network. In the third phase, the MPLS multicast VPN solution phase, NGMVPN is adopted. NGMVPN, which is based on the MPL's tunering technologies, uses BGP to transmit C multicast routes and utilize MPLS P2MP tuners to carry C multicast traffic. These conventional multicast technologies cannot meet the requirements of rapid multicast service development due to the following limitations. First, complex protocols and poor scalability. Transient nodes maintain per flow states and use multicast routing protocols to create MDTs, involving complex control signaling on the network. Second, low reliability and poor user experience. More multicast flow on a network means that more MDTs need to be established, leading to higher network overheads. As a post-fault convergence is subject to the number of multicast states, the time required by service recoveries is prolonged. Third, difficult deployment and operation and maintenance. The network needs to support various protocols, such as PAM 
and MLDP. As such, network and service deployment and operation and maintenance are complex. To overcome the limitations of conventional multicast technologies, the beer technology was put forward in the industry. The beer technology assigns a BFR ID to the source node, and each destination node in a beer domain and uses a bit string to indicate the destination nodes that need to receive data from the multicast source. Each bit in the bit string represents a specific reservoir node. The bit string instructs devices to replicate and forward multicast packets to specified reservoir nodes. The bit string is encapsulated in the beer header of each beer packet. Transient nodes on the network are unaware of multicast group states. They replicate and forward packets according to the bit string. Therefore, beer forwarding is stateless. Because services are deployed only on the ingress and egresses, transient nodes are unaware of multicast service changes. When the network topology changes, there is no need to withdraw or re-establish numerous MDTs thereby greatly simplifying operation and maintenance. In addition, beer reduces the number of entrants that need to be restored because it does not need to maintain per-flow MDT states. If a fault occurs on the network, devices only need to update entrants in their BFTs after convergence of the underlay routes. This ensures fast convergence if a fault occurs thereby improving reliability and enhancing user experience. Conventional multicast requires a protocol for establishing MDTs, whereas beer does not. On a network running beer, transient nodes, which do not have multicast services, do not need to establish an MDT for each multicast flow, eliminating associated overheads. The beer technology applies to MPLS networks. However, in terms of unicast forwarding, SRV6, which is based on the IPv6 data plane, has developed rapidly. To cope with this technology trend, BRV6, a new technology, emerges in the field of multicast. Independent of MPLS, BRV6 uses the beer architecture and encapsulation and matches the development trend of IPv6 networks. BRV6 inherits BRV's advantages in simplified operation and maintenance and high reliability. In addition, BRV6 simplifies protocols and uses IPv6 addresses to distinguish multicast VPN services from GTM services, eliminating the need to allocate, manage, and maintain MPLS labels. Beer v6 uses an IPv6 extension header to carry beer forwarding instructions, eliminating the need for MPLS label-based forwarding. IPv6 extensibility facilitates the evolution and addition of new features, such as multicast network slicing and install flow information telemetry. Now let's talk about the fundamentals of BRV6. In terms of the BRV6 packet format, BIFT, and BRV6 forwarding process, BRV6 combines the advantages of IPv6 and BIR. How is IPv6 extended to implement BRV6? First, let's learn about the BRV6 packet format. To process the extension of IPv6 packets, BRV6 defines a new type of SID, end beer SID. The end beer SID can fully utilize IPv6 union route reachability to allow services to be transmitted across the network, even if some IPv6 nodes do not support BRV6. An end beer SID consists of two parts locator and other bits. A locator indicates a BRV6 forwarding node and provides a location function. For example, in the figure, the locator of PE1 is this, and other bits are this. 
So the combination of these two parts forms PE1s and BRSID. Let's take a look at the BIFT. The BIFT is mandatory for each BFR in a beer with six domain to forward multicast packets. Each entry in the BIFT indicates the set of BFERs that are reachable through a BFR neighbor. Each BFR uses an IGP to advertise information, such as the local BFR ID, BSL, and pass calculation algorithm to other BFRs, and obtain the BFR's neighbor to each BFER through pass calculation. During the packet forwarding, a bitwise AND operation is performed between the bit string in the packet and the FBM in the BIFT. Based on the AND operation result, the device determines whether to copy and send the packet to the BFR neighbor corresponding to the FBM. For example, in this figure, after receiving the BRV6 information floated by other BFRs, node B generates forwarding information about the next hop to each node with a valid BFR ID. After establishing its own BIFT, node B replicates and forwards received BR packets. After learning about the BRV6 packet format and BIFT, let's talk about how BRV6 forwards data. On the network shown in the figure, each node in the BR domain establishes its own BIFT through IGP flooding. When the multicast packet sent by the multicast source enters the BRV6 domain, the ingress converts to the packet into a BRV6 packet by encapsulating the packet with a BRV6 header. The source address field in the IPv6 header is set to the IPv6 unicast address of the ingress. The destination address field in the IPv6 header is set to the end beer address of the next hop node. After receiving the BRV6 packet, a transit BFR first processes the IPv6 header. If the IPv6 destination address in the packet is the same as the local BFR's end beer IPv6 unicast address, the BFR follows the BRV6 forwarding process to parse the corresponding fields in the BRV6 extension header and copy the packet to the next node. When an egress receives the multicast packet, if the bit corresponding to the BFR ID of the local node in the bit string of the packet is set, the egress removes the IPv6 encapsulation and extracts the BFIR ID from the BRV6 header to determine the root node from which the packet was received. The egress then determines the VPN instance to which the packet belongs based on the source address of the packet and searches the routing table of the VPN instance to forward the packet. BRV6 is a multicast technology based on native IPv6 and does not depend on MPLS during encapsulation. Inside, it uses IPv6 addresses to identify nodes and can forward packets as long as routes are reachable. For example, P2 in the figure does not support BRV6, but P2 can learn that the destination nodes of the packet are PE2 and PE3 based on the routing table generated based on an IGP. This eliminates the need for all devices on the entire network to support BRV6, thereby facilitating smooth network deployment. BRV6 allows multicast packets to traverse different ASs based on static configurations. As shown in this figure, the ASBR in AS100 does not support BRV6. All devices in AS200 support BRV6. In this case, you can manually set ASBR2's and BRSID on PE1 as the next hop for the multicast packets to be sent to the nodes with BFR ID1 and BFR ID2 so that the multicast packets can reach 
AS200. BRV6 can be used in multiple scenarios, such as meteorological industrial. Most conventional meteorological network systems use P2P unicast transmission and use VPN private lines to backup data. The cost of using private lines for transmission is high. In the meteorological industrial, BRV6 hierarchical multicast replication can effectively implement efficient P2MP transmission of meteorological data. Simplifying deployment and reducing bandwidth consumption and investment. In addition, when some devices on the meteorological network do not support multicast communication, BRV6 can still ensure smooth transmission of meteorological data across these devices. In the future, cloud networks will be popular. The number of devices that access networks will increase sharply and users will have higher requirements on network service quality. SRV6 and BRV6 help transmit data on IPv6 networks in unicast and multicast modes, respectively. BRV6 can be deployed on a service provider's core network to transmit multicast traffic for services that require multicast data transmission. For services that require unicast data transmission, services can be used to forward data. Working with SRV6, BRV6 allows both unicast and multicast services to be transmitted based on a unified IPv6 data plane and a unified IGP or BGP control plane, thereby simplifying protocols. Finally, let's have a brief review of the content we covered today. At the beginning of this course, we learned about the background of BRV6 from three aspects. Requirements on bandwidth and user experience in new service scenarios, IPv6 network development, and the limitations of conventional multicast technologies. Then we talked about features of BRV6, simplified protocols, independence from MPLS, easy deployment, and high reliability. And then we cover the fundamentals of BRV6 from the aspects of the BRV6 packet structure, BIFT, and BRV6 forwarding process. Moving on, we introduce the application of BRV6 in the meteorological industrial. Finally, we describe the vision of combining BRV6 and SRV6 to facilitate data transmission in the cloud network. That's all for this course. Thank you so much for watching.